All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make it to the first castle as Huntress uh, and clear all the enemies and survive without uh, dying along the way. This is going to be a new game. I'm playing on PQ30, which is the kind of newest cutting edge version of the game. There might be some things that are broken, but broadly speaking, the strategies and the tactics that we're going to look at are going to be the same here. So I'm going to do a standard run, and to keep it simple, um, I'm going to use uh, let's use the Huntress, and we're going to be playing on hard mode, and we're going to do no modifiers. So normally I'd play a bottle chopper on, it's my favorite kind of common modifier that I see, but let's do no modifiers and walk you through the process. So why did I pick Huntress? So Huntress, I would say, is probably the easiest um, character to play with for, you know, trying to defeat uh, the first boss. Uh, the main reason for that is because you have a poison spear. And that's important because if you're attacking, like with the knight, your attacks are usually going to get blocked by the toad. But if you use poison or any other kind of DPS, then your attacks are going to get through before the block. So uh, that's what we'll do. We'll do uh, poison spear. We're doing huntress. So now the first thing we're looking at, kind of like what can I do? What's coming up on the map? So I've got this guy. Um, the chef is basically a giveaway fight easy one it's four chips um, then after that we've got the rat so this path is basically worth six i'm just trying to find the path that's worth the most the path is worth five that's worth four so enchantress is usually a pretty high priority target now um, i do have 15 chips so what i could do is i could go for the four here and then roll for an enchantment that's worth 10 to 15. Uh, there are some good ones in that range so that's what we'll do now enchantress is one of those things where in the new, it's, it's a new feature, so it could be very different by the time you're playing this. But broadly speaking, what I'm trying to do is I'm just going for the most powerful opportunities first. And kind of thinking it out from there. Now this first fight, um, it looks like I could take five, maybe 10 the first turn. Um, so let me, I'm just gonna try to kill it within two turns. So to kill it within two turns, so this is, I'm going to get 11 here. So if I poison for 11, I'm going to take 11 this turn and probably 7, 6, 7 next turn. So it's going to be, you know, many turns to kill it. So what we'll do is we'll use gems and then poison it for 21. So now it's going to be 21 and then maybe another 10 or 15. So this could be a two turn kill. Now I could do a turn one kill. So you can usually afford to use your ability once per encounter combat. So we'll do this, and now we're definitely going to kill it in two turns, no problem. So I'm going to be taking five or ten here. That's okay. Um, I'll take ten. And then this turn, um, he's just going to die. So I'll end my turn, he's dead. So in this fight, I took ten damage, and I'm basically neutral in terms of resources. The way I think about it is if I can use my abilities one time, then I'm kind of neutral. If I didn't use them at all, then I'm gaining, accumulating. And if I use them multiple times, then I'm kind of digging a hole for myself. So let's check out the Enchantress and see what we can do with 19. So add block 5, that's okay. Um, add attack 10, also okay. Nothing amazing here. Now what we could consider is, do we have anything we could sell to try to get... Um, this to be any two cards, right? If you have a item, let's say, here's a good example, a stun with cooldown four, we could change the requirement on this to be any two cards. That would be really powerful. Now, the problem with Enchantress right now is you can't really know ahead of time if the enchant will apply to this item. <laughs> Unfortunately, you kind of have to guess or you have to know ahead of time. So to keep it simple, let's just change, let's just do, um, let's add attack 10. That's a simple one. Um, again, not the best. I might even skip this one sometimes. But it looks like we can attach it to any of these three. Let's put it on the, maybe the spear. Uh, yeah, let's just put it on the spear. Again, not the best option, but um, it'll do okay. And again, I'm taking the attack instead of the block because I'd rather just kill the enemy sooner rather than, um, take longer. Now I could have, instead of doing Enchantress, I could have gone for the Blacksmith and then upgraded the Spear to be two pairs, right? If you look at the uh, upgrade path, 
I can get to, you know, plus 50% with two pairs. So that might have been a better choice in this case, but for now, early game, just some attack damage is great. So this guy is next to Griffin, or we can go down here. So this is five, this is five. So this path is worth 11, great. And I don't have enough for any upgrades yet, so we'll just keep going. All right, Griffin, uh, 10 or higher, or queen or higher. So if he hits a face card or a 10 in these two, then he's going to hit me for 18. Um, so I could stun him. Um, if, he hits, if he hits a face card, though, he might do wings. So that's going to be better, actually, for me, since he's not going to do damage, and he's going to take damage next turn. So let's do something similar. To, let's do a similar play to the last one. Let's do gems and see what we get. Okay. Let's just do double poison. Poison. Get an attack. Uh, reset cooldowns. Poison again. Again, I'm really not using the stun ability, so we should kill him in two turns. So I might take 18 here. We'll see. Okay. Great. So no damage. Good fight. Now the trade-off I'm making here is I'm using the energy and the gems when you know I could be spending HP. So if you think about it, one of them might be a more valuable resource than the other. And it looks like we've got five here versus four for flea market. Now this is kind of tricky. I kind of like flea markets. Sometimes you can make valuable trades, like a energy for gems or energy for chips is a good one. Um, at the benefit of not taking any damage. So we'll see when we get closer. Oh, I should have done a gem upgrade here. Forgot to do that. So again, it's a pretty similar fight to the last one. I think almost the same. So he's got a four attack, four card flush attack. So probably unlikely. Closest thing he's got is hearts or diamonds. He has to hit both hearts or both diamonds. So I'd say it's pretty unlikely. So let's play a long game here. I'm going to do a poison and pass. Okay, he's got me on a stun. Now we could have hit it hearts here. Um, I think we're just going to eat it. If he hits us for 16, he hits us for 16. Okay, nothing. Um, all right, so now we've got King Ace. Now this might be worth the cooldown reset. Let's see. So he needs to hit two spades or two diamonds. Again, pretty unlikely. So, but it might be worth it just to hit the 21. And Actually, we just kill him this turn. Great. So again, if you notice, we're still kind of hanging around 10 or 9 energy, 5 gems. Um, now, what do we got here? 6 and 3. So the ground line is pretty easy fight. Um, the ghost is also pretty easy. 5 black cards is pretty hard for him to hit. Uh, giant rats. So this is 4, 6. This is a 10 path. This is a three through the flea market. It's pretty easy. So if you think about opportunity costs, now I could go here or go here long term, right? So I could go here and make 10 chips or go here and make three. So I'm basically paying seven to go to the flea market. Now would I pay seven to go to the flea market? Not really. I don't think it's worth it. So we'll go for the fights. And this time I, won't rem I will remember to do a card upgrade. We'll upgrade gems. So early game, gems are a really affordable, great upgrade. You know, usually one fight will pay for it and if you can avoid using an extra gem because you got that extra card out of it then um then you can keep staying ahead now 10 king is pretty good well, he's got no nothing nothing to speak of here so 20 poison from the start is a great play um he does have a pair so now i can spend energy to not take damage so we'll do that Again, so what this allows us to do, not taking damage, is we can take more fights. So if we're starting to get low here, like 40 or 50, we might want to start avoiding fights because we're too wounded. We can't take these fights. We might take campsites instead of fights. This means that, like in this case, if I go here, I'll get six chips if I win. If I go here, I don't get any. So I'm paying six chips to go here by skipping this fight, essentially. It's the opportunity cost. Now, hoarder, I don't really care about hoarder. Uh, maybe. 
I, I generally like to keep gems for combat. Um, I'd rather, it's only two each, not a great rate. I'd rather use them. Uh, blacksmith is an interesting route. So I hit, so I get six and then go to blacksmith with 20. So with 20, I could upgrade, this costs 15. So I only need 15 to upgrade that. So if I spend, so I don't need to, you know, nothing else to spend, let's just go do the fight. Okay, so seven queen, 17's good. Um, looks like he's no chance of hitting me here. So we'll just do 17 is fine. I don't need to roll gems here. The curse is whatever. It's cool down, so I'm not gonna get hit. Um, we'll just pass. Again, this guy, I think it's pretty bad odds for getting five black cards, so I think we're fine just playing this out slowly. Um, Jack Ace, it's great. No need to roll. So here, I'm, I might get away with this fight without spending any resources. Um, but I will spend resources if I need to win. Now he's 24. I always just check to make sure if, I, if, I, if I've got pairs, I'll use it. Otherwise, I can turn and just win. Okay, great. So next up is, so we can go blacksmith. This is worth five. This cave is worth 10. Okay. Do we want to go blacksmith, upgrade the spear, and then you know, go for five here, or do we want to go for the 10? Now the trade-off is if I go into castle, so I'm going to spend 15 here, get five. I'm going into the castle with maybe 10 or 15 chips, uh, which means I win the fight. I'll get 10 or 15 more. I can buy one thing. If I go to the cave, go to the castle with 30 chips, so I can maybe buy two things. So the question is, would I rather buy two things or buy one thing and have an upgraded spear? Well, spear is pretty good. Probably going to use it the whole game. Um, it gets better with pairs, so we'll do that. Oh, traveling trader, let's see. Now, traders, usually I might buy food. 12 is okay. Um, I think I can afford to buy two and still get the upgrade. So we'll do that. Uh, two. This is fine. I don't really need this right now. That might be a mistake. Again, I'm not a pro at this game, but uh, we'll see. So upgrade, upgrade spear. So now we can get bonus damage from pairs. So this works better in the long game if I've got card upgrades and ways to actually get pairs consistently. Um, in this case, I might be using gems to get those pairs. One trick um, you'll know is you can actually eat food to get HP. So if you get a trader, basically spending two chips for 10 HP, sort of. So there is healing in this game, but it's kind of concealed behind uh, multiple resources. Essentially it's you know, two chips for an HP, but there's not a direct way to do it. You have to buy food and then spend the food. You only spend one food per space. Anyways, all right, so this fight is against the Kobold. He needs a two card straight to hit me. Now the problem here is you can't really, you can't really predict if he's gonna get a straight. Um, you can predict if he's going to get a three card straight. So here, yes, they had a nine to get a three card straight. So it's a four, you know, four possible cards out of a deck of 52. It's maybe 10% ish. Again, this is rough math. So unlikely. Um, or a three card straight, which is, oh, sorry, that is a three card straight. The two card straight, I don't know what the odds are, but you can't really plan it one way or the other because you can't see the one card. So he just has to get one of their cards that's a straight to hit you. So this is 15. 15 is okay. Let's roll some gems and see. Okay, we got 21. Um, sure, we'll do 21. I don't know if this is worth using energy. Let me think. So if I use energy, I can add 11 more. Well, I can add 11 more poison and 10 more damage. So if I hit him for 10, he goes down to 70. 11 more poison. He has 31 poison. So 31 poison means he's at 70. Next turn he takes 31, goes down to 40. So I'd probably kill him in two turns if I use energy. Or two more turns after this one. Um, I think that's okay. I'm willing to you know, roll the dice, potentially take damage. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so he does have the two card straight. So at this point I can think, okay, can I kill him this turn if I want to avoid damage? Or do I want to just take nine? I'll take nine with the chance that, 20% chance I think of taking 36 instead. Kind of risky at this point, but I think I've got the HP for it. So I'll just grab the food and go for it. 
Now Duke almost never, I almost never want to use this unless I'm 100% certain or very certain I'm going to take a lot of damage. I'd rather avoid it as much as possible so this poison is going to kill it. Okay. Yeah, we got another fight. Okay, so there's five. And we'll see what we got next. So this guy or this guy. So this guy will probably hit us more consistently for less damage. This guy will hit us less consistently for more damage. He's worth three. He's worth three. Here we can afford to spend a gem to defeat him. Um, so I think we'll go for that. He's 84 HP versus 88. So pretty much the same. All right, we'll go for the thug. And again, this is a little more, you know, high variance, right? Because you could get blackjacks every turn if he rolls well, right? But we'll see. Uh, we got six, so no relevant upgrades yet. All right. So four king. It's not great. Um, he's, he does have two face cards, so if he has an ace in here, he hits us. So this one I'm going to be pretty aggressive. Let's roll gems and see what we get. Great. So we got a pair here for the food. So now we're up one food. So we could stun him if we need to. Uh, we'll just go two poison and cool down. I don't want to reset cooldown and do it again because we just got a two. It's not great. Might reset cooldown next turn. Let's see. Okay, this is looking good. No face cards, no aces. So pretty unlikely that we'll hit blackjack, but could be. Um, so we're going to take 16, this is a 2 7, not really worth cooldown, so go for it. Okay, two face cards again. Now, this is 14 plus 10, so I could do 24 plus 13. Uh, I think that's one short. It's going to be 37, so it's one short of killing him. So I could use gems and reset cooldown, or I could roll the dice on this. Now, if I roll the dice to 30, 30 is kind of a lot. But I'll pay 30 um, if it means that I have a high chance of, um, yep, okay, we got lucky. Uh, now we're looking at 14 poison. Okay, this is easy poison. And then he takes the 10 from the enchantment and we win. So cool, we got him before he hit us. So it's another zero damage. So let's go to Castle Hearts. All right guys, so that was a quick rundown of how to get to the first castle is Huntress. I'll see you in the future for more videos. Please subscribe if you like this game. If you want to see more content, like it. And I'll see you in the next video.